and who's that? Well, I, I believe, and I'm not sure, but I believe it's this guy that goes by the name of Ferris Khan. Um, I had to put it together based on having gotten communication with Mark Fisher because Mark Fisher said, I've got a guy, recently, since he spoke to the St. Pete Times, first time I ever talked to Mark Fisher. I never spoke to him before he ever talked to the Times, but after he talked to the Times, he got a hold of me and said, Marty, I got this guy who keeps trying to pump me for data about the St. Pete Times, you, what the plans are, what's going on in the, you know, amongst the community of people who are, who are criticizing what's going on inside with Miscavige. And I get the awful feeling that this guy may be a, a, an agent. And I said, you know, send me a picture of him. He sent me a picture of him. I passed it on to Rinder. We'd never seen the guy before. Of course, we wouldn't necessarily even, you know, see them. I didn't know what Dave LeBeau looked like until years after the fact. Yet I initiated the whole thing, orchestrated it. Um, we didn't recognize him. I put the, let the whole thing drop. And then Mark was just happened to be chatting, and he said, um, one other thing you might want to know about this guy is in the end of 99, beginning of 2000, when I was going to go down to Florida to talk to the McPherson Trust people, and Jesse Prince in particular, an old friend of mine, he said, this Ferris Gone guy, you know, all of a sudden had a business opportunity for me in Phoenix and was all over me. To, I had to come now. He got a place for, you know, set up an apartment for me, um, had a job for me immediately because the mortgage thing was not working and, and it was just too good to be true. And so I took it and I went down there and then I got settled. And I was trying to make arrangements to go to, go to see Jesse and those folks anyway in early 2000. And, and all of a sudden, uh, Ferris has got free tickets to a Mexican resort for a week of pleasure on the Mexican Riviera. So now I'm down there. He said, I never did. You know, Ferris made sure, I guess, that I never did make it to Clearwater. And I went, cha-ching. I said, Mark, interesting. I was on the other side of this. In fact, I didn't even realize it, but I set that whole thing up because on my side of the equation in late 99, early 2000, David Miscavige was being pulled into the McPherson civil case, which I've described in an earlier series with you all. We had gotten some intelligence locally through the Lisa McPherson Trust that Jesse Prince was having Mark Fisher come down. Miscavige was freaked. He was certain that Fisher, having worked directly for Miscavige for a number of years, was coming down to testify to make sure that Miscavige got, you know, testify about Miscavige's control of the church to make sure that Miscavige got solidly into that McPherson lawsuit. That's all that was on his mind at that time, okay? So he said to Mike and I, he pulled Mike and I, you make sure Mark Fisher does not come to Florida. That was our orders, and it was emphatic. So Mike and I got on the horn with Linda Hamill in L.A. and said, hey, what happened to your LeBeau guy? Can't, you know... Can't he find, come up with a distraction for Mark Fisher? She goes, well, Bo's blown. He's off investigating Minton, you know, under another identity. But we got another guy who substituted for LeBeau. I never knew, she never mentioned any names for security purposes. She said, I got another guy. Or maybe it was an AKA, but the, whatever. So we worked out this whole plan. Linda and I, Mike might have been in on it. I'm not sure. He's aware of it for sure because we both got the order, but it was a COB cycle. So I was on the thing, and I could directly talk to anybody in OSA irrespective of Mike, and I was definitely on it. M Linda and I had numerous conversations about how to use this resource to prevent Fisher from getting to Florida, and she came up with this whole plan. Well, we know he's got a little bit of a problem between jobs, I got this guy, he's the guy who's now in communication with the Vegas group. He can come up with a job for the guy. Phoenix, we get him out of we get him out of town. We set up a whole thing, you know, first month's rent already paid on your apartment. We got the agent. So the agent went in, got him to Phoenix, Fisher. And so the intelligent report goes back to Miscavige, you know. You know, I tell him, Fisher's in Phoenix now. I handled it, right? Then we get more intelligence from Florida. Fisher's coming anyway. 
Oh, my God, I'm back on the horn with Linda Hamill. What are we going to do? What can this guy do? Well, Mark loves Mexico, but up and up and up. So Ferris Khan comes up with free tickets for a week on the Mexican Riviera and says, Mark, you know, the manna from heaven. And suddenly, Mark is off to Mexico, and he doesn't show up to Clearwater again. Of course, we went through a whole, we were coming up, ramping up for a whole, and I don't remember the technicality of the motion, but Sandy Rosen came in to represent Miscavige. You know, he had initially been, you know, Moody had initially ruled in November that Miscavige could be added, but he wasn't technically added. As a defendant. Yeah, and so we brought Rosen in to represent Miscavige. And so those first two months of 2000 were the most intense I've ever experienced in Scientology in terms of pressure because he just couldn't get, you know, he was kicking and screaming. He wasn't going to get into that suit. And so I was. this was an integral part of it that Fisher might tip the scales as a witness. So it was a big, you know, well done to me because I had the guy down partying on the Mexican Riviera. And to prove that he was partying on the Mexican Riviera, Ferris Khan sent to Linda Hamill videotapes of him at Mr. Frog's or whatever the big tourist trap bar was of Mark Fisher partying in Mexico, which I showed to Miscavige, which he got a great kick out of. Oh, look at that guy, blah, 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 you know. Um, but it was, it was my compliance report, the proof. You know, in Scientology, if you got a big order, you got to show evidence that you got it done. Well, that was the evidence. It was Ferris Khan's videotape of Mark Fisher partying on the Mexican Riviera.